Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week we're heading again to Ether Revolt the Standard for a deck I'm really excited about for a couple of reasons. On one hand, I love this deck because it's just really unique and super fun to play. It kind of plays like a cross between a really weird Boggles deck with lots of card draw, some crazy strange combo deck like an Aetherflux Reservoir combo deck almost, and a little bit of like modern Seramos, the combo deck with Pure Seal Paladin and all of the Zero Man equipments. Kind of you mash all of those decks together and play them in standard. That's what we're playing this week. I'm calling the deck Seramade because of two of the key cards in the deck. The other reason I'm super excited about this deck is it is about as cheap as it gets. The deck is 53 bucks in the paper world, 11 ticks on Magic Online, and half Half of that cost in paper, and I'm sure on Magic Online even more, is just from the eight dual lands, the uh, four port towns, the four prairie streams. So if you want to go even more budget, you can just get rid of those lands, and the deck's going to be somewhere around 20, 25 bucks in the paper world, and like, I don't even know, free online, like two ticks, three ticks, some um, dirt cheap price. So a quick reminder before we break down the deck, if you enjoy budget magic and you enjoy this Strame deck, it would be amazing of you. If you could take a quick second, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So kind of the main combo of the deck and the namesake cards of the deck is Sram Senior Edificer and Sigarda's Aid and we'll kind of walk through our plan for the deck in a minute but we got to talk about these cards first because they synergize really well together and kind of form the initial idea that the deck came from. So Sram obviously you cast an equipment or an aura or a vehicle but in our deck an equipment is what we're primarily using and you get to draw a card when you cast it. Only two mana so it's really cheap in this deck it's not a full on like we're trying to combo off and win the game in one turn necessarily like you see in modern with the Stramos deck but this is a great value card for us the plan of our deck is to get a bunch of very cheap artifacts which happen to be equipments on the battlefield and then we use those artifacts to power up our payoff cards and SRAM just lets us generate value along the way and it's also a card that can benefit from the equipment we're casting. Sigarda's Aid is really awesome in this deck because it lets us do two things. First, it lets us use all of our equipment like combat tricks so we have a SRAM out, let's say, our opponent goes to shock our SRAM, we can flash in an equipment that boosts SRAM's toughness, save it from the shock, it sort of generates card advantage in that sense, even more importantly, it cheats on mana. While many of our equipment are really cheap to cast, zero mana or one mana, they all are, the problem is some of them are pretty expensive to actually equip, two mana, three mana, and our deck is pretty low on lands, we are very aggressive, very combo-y, so we don't have enough lands to use spend three mana to equip a random equipment but if we have a cigar to zade out we get to equip it for free it just automatically goes in so not only do we get to play them whenever we want to and use them like combo tricks it's cheating on a ton of mana over the course of the game so that's kind of the basis of the deck is using strom to generate card advantage and we're fine just playing two or three equipment drawing two or three cards getting two or three artifacts on the battlefield we don't have to go infinite to make strom good in this deck and then cigar is aid to help us cheat on mana and kind of enables our combo finish so as far as our artifacts and these are the backbone of our deck our entire plan our way of winning the game all of our payoff cards want these artifacts and these artifacts Artifacts are super great because they do two different things. Uh, first off, they're equipment, so they boost our creatures, and we're actually using them like equipment. This deck, we're not just looking to have a zero mana artifact, and we don't care what the text is. Being able to put these on our creatures with the help of Cigar Disease, especially, is a big part of our plan. So Bonesaw only plus one, but it all adds up. Cathar Shield is awesome because it lets us save our creatures from a lot of removal spells with the big toughness boost and vigil is also relevant because we are going to be winning with creature beatdowns so being able to attack with this huge creature
player and have it back to block is sometimes really important to winning the game. So that's our zero mana equipment. And then our one mana equipment, we have Inventor's Goggles, really good. We get some free equips while Sram is not an artificer. We do have two different creatures that are artificers in the deck. So if we get our goggles out there, it just automatically equips for free, even if we don't have Sigarda's Aid. Stitcher's Graft is kind of our finisher. Plus three, plus three for one mana is like a colorless giant growth when we have Sigarda's Aid out. And it sticks around, and our Cathar Shield gives Vigilance, so the not untapping thing doesn't come into play. So this helps us force through a ton of damage. And then Skeleton Key, just a one of, but it lets us filter through our deck, get rid of some extra lands, makes it so our opponent can't block our creatures with big creatures, although Skulk isn't super relevant. Most importantly, though, all together, this just gives us a ton of artifacts we can get on the battlefield on turn one, on turn two. Hopefully draw some cards with SRAM along the way. But one of the unique things about this deck is we will just cast these cards even if we don't have a SRAM out. We just want them on the battlefield because they enable our payoffs. So our biggest payoff is Bastion Inventor. So we're kind of this improvised, blue-white improvised theme deck. So if we can play a couple of Cathar Shields, a Bone Saw, maybe an Inventor, Sagagles, on turn two or turn three, we can cast Bastion Inventor as a 4-4 Hexproof. And that's pretty good. It does equip up to Inventor's Goggles for free since it is an Artificer. So it can be like a 5-6 if we have a goggles out and then ideally we'll be able to griff spoon it to give it flying so we're going to have this huge flying hexproof threat and not many decks can actually deal with that if we have the cathar shield it's going to gain vigilance so we can attack and deal damage to our opponent and still have it back to block so we're not taking damage from our opponent stuff so this is kind of how we win the game is bastion inventors and getting them out in the battlefield as quickly as possible i mean it's theoretically possible to do it on turn one uh, we could have five zero man equipment a blue source and a bastion inventor but more likely turn two turn three and it gets even crazier as the deck goes along, but we'll talk about that in a second. The other payoffs are card draw. So reverse engineer, really straightforward. We just play some artifacts, tap them, all those random equipment we have, draw three cards, keeps us cycling through our deck, finding SROMs and Bastion Inventors and all that stuff. Paradoxical outcome is kind of the way we actually finish the game. And it allows us to cast all of our random equipment on turn zero, on turn one, on turn two, just to have artifacts on the battlefield to pay for reverse engineer draw a couple cards with SRAM to get our bastion inventor out and then what we do is pick up all of our artifacts draw a ton more cards hopefully in those cards will be one of our cigar aid and then we replay our all of our equipment we're hopefully drawing some cards with SRAM in this process but even if we're not it's fine and when we have the cigar aid out all those unequipped random janky equipment that are sitting out there are going to go on our bastion inventor and the end result is going to be as early as like turn four we can have just this massive flying hex proof bastion inventor 10 power 12 power 14 power we hit our opponent a couple times game over so Unlike some decks, Paradoxical Outcome is just a good value card in our deck. It does sort of combo with the Sigarda's Aid and letting us get our equipment back to our hands so we can take advantage of the free equip with Sigarda's Aid. But we're perfectly fine firing this off to just draw three, draw four cards and kind of reset our artifacts. It also allows us to like tap all of our artifacts to cast a Bastion Inventor. All of our artifacts will be tapped. We pick up all of our artifacts, but since they're zero and one mana, we can cast them, they'll be untapped, and maybe that'll give us enough improvised mana to cast a second Bastion Inventor or whatever. So there's a lot of just cool synergies with picking up all of our artifacts, using them to generate more mana with improvised, draw more cards with SRAM, equip up for free on our Bastion Inventor and win the game. Our last card is Stonehaven Outfitter, and this one is kind of the, the third creature in our deck. SRAM is this great card advantage engine. Bastion Inventor is our finisher. Stone Even Outfitter is just good. Like, it's not as good or important as other two cards, but it's on curve as a two drop. It pumps up our SROMs and Bastion Inventors and itself when it is equipped, so it's better than it actually looks. It takes advantage of the equipping for free, and it can kind of be this weird backup card advantage engine. If our opponent has a Wrath or something, we're going to draw two or three cards when our creatures die, which lets us just try again the next turn and fight through Wrath with that card advantage. Mana base-wise, as I 
mentioned, half the cost of the deck are these dual lands. Rest of the mana base, 4-4-4, four, 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 Evolving Wilds Islands Plains. In the sideboard, Metallic Rebuke and Negate are important for fighting through control decks, also our best answers to the copycat combo deck. Metallic Rebuke is usually one mana mana leak in our deck, since we can tap all of our random bone saws and cathar shields to help pay for it. And Negate is just a really efficient answer to non-creature spells. Emulating Glare and Fumigate are for aggressive matchups to fight against uh, decks that are going to be doing a lot of attacking. And then Fragmentize and Decommission let us fight against our opponent's artifacts. Take down a Heart of Kirin, a Metalwork Colossus, a Paradox Engine, whatever happens to be across the table. And that is Sramade for Ether Evil Standard, and that's our budget magic for this week. So, I think this deck is super sweet, especially for its price being ultra budget and even cheaper if you trim down on some of the duels. It's actually way more competitive than it looks, and it really does feel like this weird cross between, like, Boggles and uh, Etherflux Reservoir and Sramos and Modern. Like, we have these combo-y elements where we sometimes draw just a ton of cards and kind of go off with SRAM and Paradoxical Outcome and go really deep that way, we also just sometimes beat down with really hard to deal with threats. I mean, that's always how we finish the game, uh, is with Bastion Venner or one of our other creatures, but mostly Bastion Venner. But sometimes we just get this crazy draw where on turn one we play Venner's Goggles, maybe on turn two we have a second in Venner's Goggles, on turn three we can Bastion Venner, equip it up, and we just have this massive hex-proof creature that our opponent just can't deal with and we just beat down and went on the aggro plan so there's actually a lot of play to the deck and even though we're playing all these really bad equipment all the zero and one mana cards they're actually really good in our deck because we have so many payoffs like with a SRAM Bonesaw and Cathar Shield are great with a Bastion Inventor powering them out making mana they're great. Paradox of Outcome, they're great. Reverse Engineer, they're great. So we have so many cards that even though it feels like we're playing these really weak cards and it's almost card disadvantage to have those in our deck, the fact that they enable such really powerful payoffs makes them very strong in our deck. They're not just these really bad equipment. They're actually producing mana and drawing tons of cards and doing all kinds of stuff. So I had a ton of fun playing this deck. Anyway, that's our Budget Magic deck for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos, and I will talk to you soon.